Hey, what's going on, everyone? This is Mitch. Hope you've had a great Tuesday. Hope you're having a great work week. Uh, before I start this video, I do want to mention I'm feeling a little under the weather. So if it's a little bit of a low energy uh, video, if you're having a hard time hearing me, I do apologize. It's not feeling the best right now. But I'm going to get you all an update here. We're going to continue to break down really next week. This week, I can tell you it's going to be warm. Temperatures are going to keep warming uh, tomorrow. Widespread 70s. Um, I know for me personally, I don't mind a brief warm up, but when it's long lasting and you're wasting a large chunk of a winter month like December, uh, that's when I have a problem with it. So hopefully we don't have too warm of weather for too long, especially in the south. But I tell you what, some of the models are wanting to show that, but there's a little bit of differences here on the GFS and its ensembles and then the European and its ensembles. So we're going to break down that and we're going to talk about the potential for Maybe a couple storm systems and impactful storm systems next week. Uh, we're going to break that down. But uh, if you guys have not subscribed, hit the subscribe button. Like the video if you like it. Last day of November, we're going to get rocking and rolling in December. Very excited about the winter months. I wish we had something more concrete to talk about. Uh, this time last year, we did. We had a big time storm system to introduce December 1st. And I don't know if any of y'all remember, but areas of northern and central Alabama, uh, areas of Georgia got... <clears throat> Some areas got a half inch to almost an inch of snow as uh, wraparound precipitation was bringing in. And then it dumped a huge northwest flow event for the mountains. So uh, there was actually multiple storm systems in December. So last December was very active. So we'll see how this December is. But um, um excited for sure, definitely, and uh, ready to rock and roll here. Before we get going, if you guys got anything I can pray about, please put in the comments. Uh, gives me an opportunity to pray for you guys. It gives everybody an opportunity to pray for y'all when they see the prayer request on there. So take advantage of that. Prayer is powerful. I want to mention, first time I've ever done this, I got four people who've joined joined my channel. One is a guy named Isaac Burtis. Hopefully I said your name right, buddy. Um, but he's joined my channel. And I want to give a shout out to his channel. Um, you know, all you got to do is type in B-U-S-S-I-N bike rides. And he's trying to promote his channel. He's trying to grow his channel. And uh, I remember I, when I had a small channel, I was always trying to um, self-promote myself too. So definitely give him a subscribe. He's trying to grow his channel, trying to look out for him, and he's looking out for me monthly. So uh, definitely give his channel a subscribe there. Um, moving forward here, we're going to look at the GFS, the European, some temperatures, and just take a look at some things here. But the latest GFS, we're going to scan through this. I want to mention the jet stream is way north. That is why we're not really getting any big time storm systems to the south. You need this thing to dip south. Therefore, a low pressure can ride the jet stream and deliver more of a blow precipitation wise and give us some more widespread rain. Um, I think I read here in Columbia that it's the third driest November on record. I think at my house we picked up <coughs> a 30th, 30th of an inch of rain, I believe, which if you don't know what that is, it's between a quarter inch to a half inch of rain for the entire month, the entire 30 day period, as no rain is expected tonight. But it will continue to be dry across GFS. If you're wanting rain, if you're wondering about rain, it's going to continue to be dry across the southeast and southern areas. Um, what will continue to happen as we get into the late week, um, there will be a little bit of a dip in the jet stream where more cold air will be in the northeast. It will have pieces of energy like little clipper pieces that will continue to promote lake effect snow and just bring light rounds of snow. There's been a little bit of snow falling even today. They call it mood flakes. It's basically just a little pitter-patter of snowflakes falling in the air. Uh, appreciating the holiday spirit. So for the last day of November, I was hearing, you know, that was the case in New York City today. So hopefully that puts you guys in the, in the spirit of Christmas there. But Going forward, we're getting pretty far out, but this is the system that we were talking about over the last few days. It has trended way north. I said last night, and I was totally wrong that I didn't think this was going to trend any farther north. Certainly did, and certainly proved me wrong. If I go back 24 hours, and then we go to the present run, bam, 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 bam. This thing has trended, the actual center of low pressure has trended all the way into uh, southeast Canada. What that does here is it strings out the system and it, put, it basically puts the bulk of the main precipitation way up in Canada and areas of the northeast. So if it keeps trending north like this, this system that we're hoping for early next week is going to continue to trend drier and uh, it's going to continue to pull warm air north and even as far north as the interior areas of the northeast and then cold air rushes in behind it sorry if you see my nose move, uh, move. trying to hold in a sneeze i've been sneezing all day but then 
And keep in mind, we're getting pretty far out. It's 180 hours out. We have another system that swings through. This has showed up a little bit today. This is a little bit more of a colder system, meaning that maybe some snowfall a little bit further south, but still not, not very far south. But what I am seeing next week is it looks like the pattern does get active. So that's good news because even... Even though a lot of people here in the southeast, it's been the mid-Atlantic, you know, and it really anywhere, <coughs> especially in the southern sections, you know, we're wanting that snow, right? We're wanting that miracle December snow that I know me personally, I would I would absolutely go crazy about. So um, what I am seeing here is maybe some, it can get a little bit more active and more precipitation. What we need here is the cold air to cooperate. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that here in a second. Looking at the latest European, same thing. Pieces of energy continues to shoot through through midweek to late week through this weekend. Here comes a more robust, but more robust system, and this is the same system that the Europe that the GFS is showing. And it's a little bit more south, but even this is trending north as far as the cold air. So uh, it's more of a, a front-loaded snowfall, switching to heavy rain, then back in changes back to snow. Um, but you know, if that scenario was to come true, it doesn't look like a significant winter storm, but then the one behind it, just like the GFS shows around the same time frame for about this time next week, this looks like a pretty, if this was to happen, this would be an impactful winter storm for Boston, uh, the Ohio Valley and the Cleveland Pittsburgh. And then it would get very close to areas like New York city and Boston. We have to watch this uh, storm track. This could be a pretty big storm. So we got to watch this one. Uh, but the idea here is that it looks like it's getting more active. Now, as far as rainfall through the next 10 days, um, in fact, let's back it up through um, the next seven days. You notice uh, this stripe of rainfall from uh, uh, you know a half inch to three-fourths of an inch to an inch. This is a clear sign to me that systems are cutting. And uh, you see all this precipitation falling in, in areas of Canada and interior northeast. That tells me that low pressures are much further north. And then these things are drying out and getting strung out. Therefore, over the next week is going to be extremely dry. If you look at these values right here, this is a tenth of an inch of rain. For areas like where I live at, it's going to continue to be dry. It is so dry out there right now, guys. And that's why we're having uh, burn bans and issues with um, uh, fires you know, happening pretty easily. But I'm trying to sit here back and think of when the last big time all-nighter rain we've had or all-day rain we have and um I, I just really can't think of it to be honest would you as far as precipitation with the gfs i will warn you if you don't like warm weather in winter and i don't uh you're not gonna like this but the latest gfs getting into the weekend getting into saturday look at the warm air and then all the cold air in canada <clears throat> i will mention even though it looks like we're going to get in a warm pattern for at least in the first seven to nine to eight to nine to ten days of December, what I am watching here is cold air getting bottled up in Canada. What this is doing here is, you know, it freezes up the ground. Um, when all the cold air is up there and the jet stream is going shooting where it is to the north, it's bringing a lot of clippers. It's bringing a lot of systems. To Canada. What that does here is, is, is packing down the snowpack in Canada. So when we do get a promising pattern where the jet stream dips enough and we get cold air that punches through the eastern US, it's going to be amplified with a you know a pretty decent snowpack to Canada and up in Canada above the lower 48. So you know that's something you can think about, you know it's something that that does help and i've seen it even locally you know i'm thinking and i'm i won't drag on about this cuz i'll get all geek mode on y'all but locally here i remember the february storm in 2014 here in the carolinas the the, the huge ice storm we had we had what we call a precursor storm basically a pre event we had a little piece of energy that slid through that dumped a lot of snow here and uh, <clears throat> they dumped several inches of snow in northern South Carolina and then basically the coastal plains in North Carolina. And then 12 hours later, what with the Weather Channel called Winter Storm Packs um, on February 12th or 13th, the big time storm came through. And then there was snow on the ground, so this amplified a wedge of cold air. 
and uh, helped to make basically the short-term models trend colder at the last second. It ended up being a much colder storm in general, which means freezing rain fell a lot more south because of the amplified cold air off the snowpack that from the system that happened 12 hours prior, if that makes sense. So snowpack up here does make a difference. It's, it, you know, we don't know how much of a difference it makes. I think we will in time when we grow more knowledge when it comes to weather. But, you know, through the first eight, seven, eight days in, uh, into December, it looks like Canada will continue, especially eastern Canada, will continue to pile up the snow potentially. <clears throat> so this is good news. As far as the cold air, all the cold air is bottled up in Canada. I'll shoot through the entire run, even though it's not reliable past a certain point. All that cold air is just bottled up in Canada. So that is freezing it up up there. There's, you know, below average temperatures. So it, it really sucks for the areas in the eastern U.S. for the time being. But could it set up something the second half of the month? It really could. Um, all you need is for the pattern to cooperate. You really do. Um, it's hard to look too deep into it right now, but um, it's something to watch. Now, GEFS ensembles as far as uh, lower heights and, and more height than heights, um, the pattern almost gets almost zonal. You know, I mentioned this last night. The flow <coughs> is oriented out the west northwest to uh, the southeast, so it's just you know it's pretty much where the jet stream sitting. The northern stream is the dominant stream here, and that's where all your energy is flying. Now there might be a little a little dip here, but then you have a big dump to the west. Now what that means is if you get a big cold air dump to the west, you're going to have a little bit of a southeast ridge that flexes. Um, so areas in the southeast and the eastern U.S. are going to be warmer than average. Um, so trying to figure out what happens, I can tell you on the GEFS ensembles, it doesn't look good for the entire first half of December. But the EPS ensembles is a little bit different. It dumps some cold air to the west, but not too bad. But still, around the December 9th, 10th range, it rears its ugly head as far as warmer than average temperatures. But as far as um, snowfall from the EPS ensembles through 10 days, there's a pretty solid signal for consistent snows in the northern areas. But in the south, there's there's really no signal at all for any kind of storm system. So that's pretty much all I got, guys. <coughs> um, if y'all got any comments or questions, just, just, just put them below and I got you covered. Thank you all for the amazing support. I'll continue to keep you updated even in the slow times. But um, by the end of my favorite time of the year personally, which is uh, – you know, December, January, and February, and hopefully we'll get a nice uh, southern slider that brings everybody some winter weather. But y'all have a great night, and God bless all y'all.